Okay, everyone, hello. Uh, Shepard, I've gotten some requests to go over the Surge Slash combo, how it works, you know, kind of what sort of combos you want to lead into in what situations, maybe talk a little bit about the armor skills that could go along with it, stuff like that. So this replaces your Draw Slash. So you'll no longer be able to hold a charge. Everything for your first three hits is going to be a combo. Most basic is hitting triangle. This is probably the most straightforward. These are just vertical, single hitting, not very far moving forward attacks. Circle attacks, the first two move you in with the last hit moving you out and then the second and third hit hit twice and then triangle circle this one gets a little wild to aim we're going to try and use it from a distance here this is like if for some reason you wanted to get started from a distance and the final hit here hits twice so if you're to combine all of the different hits and you wanted to get say, just like the highest damage combo on a training pole like this guy here. Normally from sheath, I'll do something like triangle, circle, triangle, circle. This ends up generally being like my normal bread and butter combo here, but it depends. You know, if you're hitting the monster and then suddenly you find that they moved behind you a little bit, you can use the vortex slash. Likewise, if you don't want to just walk up to the monster, May as you well use Rising Slash and get a little bit closer. Next part is after any of the combos, you immediately go into a faster strong charge. And then from there, you can then do your, your main whatever third hit combo. For this reason, I don't normally run focus on this set because when you think about it, if you're just sitting here doing combos, this comes out so quickly. This doesn't need focus. And for Rage Slash, I usually find focus to be a bad thing. You want that to be out there a little bit so you can take a hit. Now, on downs, or if you know a monster's about to go down, say it's got Shock Tripper, or you know maybe it's about to go into a trap, you do your normal combo again. This strong charge still comes out very fast, but the true charge slash is like, you know, shortened. Doesn't really feel like you need focus. If you ran focus, the only thing you'd really be benefiting from is when you're doing downed true charge slashes and just a little bit, <laughs> not even a lot because um, it's already going to be shortened. The only exception to that, I guess, is if you find yourself like floating around. But I'd have to say, like, I don't know. Just don't do that as often. I found myself doing that a lot, uh, completely missing the point of the fact that, you know, you have actually a very hard-hitting combo that's just, like, right here. Decoration-wise, this is not necessarily an endgame set, although I would forgive you for thinking it was. Um... Just has some defense boost, has the Squire Knights. You get this from doing the Rondine follow requests. I think it's MR2. I'm just going to show off a hunt right here. We're going to do a Lunagron. All right, same set as before, same cats as before. I've got one Gatherer Cat, and I've got one Fighter Cat. Fighter Cat is there because his base ability, when he uses it, ends up giving you like 30% affinity, which in Master Rank, you definitely can close that gap with armor skills if you want, but I like this armor set. It has great luck three and capture expert. Obviously those do nothing for us in combat, but in the beginning when you're still grinding monsters and trying to get some of your base sets and armors and weapons together, it, it does help a lot getting extra rewards. So I've seen great luck at level three give like five rewards once, which felt really nice. So you use your adamant slash to get started a lot of times to go through 
roars and things like that. That's probably if there's one weakness is, you know, there's no tackling with your surge slash combo anymore. He really does not take a lot of damage until he kind of morbs out a little bit. I'm anticipating he's going to uh, start roaring, so I've switched over to uh, True Charge Slash under the hopes that he'll be flinched or something and this will actually land. Okay, that would have landed if he wasn't falling asleep. Just going to put that out there. <laughs> In any case, uh, landing True Charge Slash can be a bit harder. This feels a little bit like I'm using like a charge blade or something like that. Fortunately, it feels like it moves really far now. 1453 is not bad on a wake up. Especially when it's not empowered, and this is not an endgame set, so. Probably should have just done an adamant charge directly into that. That's okay. Completely different playstyle, incredibly mobile. So if you're using, you know, the power sheath to sheath all the time, like, you're not going to find yourself trading hits nearly as often. I should point out, and it's it's been difficult to do the testing exactly, certain hits or within certain points of the surge slash combo, it does feel a little bit like you get a little bit of flinch free, like a little bit of hyper armor. It's not perfect. It's not like rage slash, but sometimes you'll be able to attack through a hit that otherwise would have tripped you. This headpiece, by the way, I, I absolutely adore it. Having Speed Eating 3 is amazing. Like I said, this is one of the Fearain follower quest rewards. I think it's from MR2. You, you, it's not very far into the game to get it. It's got three points of Speed Eating, two points of Attack Up. Okay, hopefully we'll get lucky. We'll be able to actually get the true charge slash off. We did. That's got to be one of the weakest true charge slashes I've ever seen. I have no idea why it only did 362. That, that doesn't make any sense to me. I guess it wasn't really empowered and we're not in white sharpness anymore. Lunagron, definitely one of the more enjoyable fights. Also, has some of the more enjoyable weapons. I really liked his hunting horn. We might make a video using his hunting horn at some point. Okay, just starting off with a adamant slash, and then we're going to have rage slash. If I was smarter, I would have just gone straight into Rage Slash rather than that one follow-up because we would have been able to go through his, his roar there. See, I used that final circle hit to get backwards a little bit to make this hit easier to hit and land on the head. If I used the Triangle or Triangle Circle, I would have ended up just moving right through him. Missing that. So that's, that's really the key behind the weapon, is, is getting used to how those moves move you. you know, even if you were just to spam the triangle attack all the time, the damage on it is still not bad. But especially if you're using like an element or a status weapon, getting either circles on the second hit or triangle circles or circles on the third hit, 
helps out quite a bit in either building up the element or building up the status. It's also the consideration, of course, what you're aiming for. I'm aiming for his head and his arms, so the circle would quite potentially whiff there. And with this Tigrix sword, for the most part, there's enough breaks in fighting that I have enough time to just sharpen it just as soon as it hits blue. And it's not the end of the world if you're in blue. It's less damage, but there are worse things. Not having good luck three in Capture Expert, <laughs> I guess. Okay, we're going to switch right back to our Rage Slash scroll. I'm, I'm really enjoying the swap, like, evasion. I think of it less as an evasion, and I think of it more as, like, just a reposition movement. Okay, I got the tail break. I do not think that tail gets cut off, unfortunately, which is actually a good thing for... Um, impact weapon users like hammers and hunting horns can actually break that. If I didn't wait to charge that, I probably would have actually landed that final hit of that true charge slash if I just threw it out right away. Oh well. You see there, I got bit, but, you know, I don't know if it's just because that's not a strong enough hit or if it's because you get a little bit of that hyper armor while you're attacking. I don't know. And for some reason, that Rage Slash hit really hard. I think they've maybe changed the mechanic to actually really carry through damage throughout the sequence of the combo. I don't know. I, I need to do more testing. But an 1100... <laughs> Rage Slash is, is pretty nice to see. So that's about perfect. As perfect as you could hope for. Landing the uh, follow-up swing and then having... Um, that's a lot of damage. Having the Rage Slash come out just in time like that. Alright, so that's it for now. If you haven't bought the game yet, check out the description. I've got a referral link through Nexus.gg, official reseller through Capcom. If you have requests, let me know down below. Otherwise, check me out my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash sdshepherd. Love to see you over there. Alright, until next time, good luck. And have a good hunt.